Good morning. Welcome to worship at Fairview Presbyterian Church. I'm the pastor here, the Reverend Emily Zyg Lindsay. It is good to be together today. A couple of quick announcements while you listen. If you would grab the pew pads along the center aisle and sign in and pass them on down, we would appreciate that. There is so much going on at the church in June. Uh, first, this Friday, June 9th, starting at 4 p.m., the trustees are having a church work day. So come to help weed the flower beds and spread fresh mulch. Uh, hot dogs will be provided. Bring a shovel or a pitchfork if you have it. Uh, many hands will make light work. Uh, we are helping out two great organizations with a used shoe drive. So there's more information about that in the bulletin, but the shoe donations are due in the bin in the lobby by next Sunday. There are also church uh, t-shirt order forms in your bulletin. Uh, these are gonna be perfect for wearing at church events like the community festival, the rummage sale, the food pantry, just to wear around town that you're a proud member of Fairview Presbyterian Church. Uh, so order forms are in your bulletin and can be turned in in the lobby or given directly to Shannon in the back. Uh, the annual church picnic is coming up on Wednesday, June 21st at 6 p.m. Uh, we'll be at Lake Erie Community Park, so make plans to join us. It's always a great event. Uh, and then finally, VBS registration forms and helper signups are out in the lobby. Uh, VBS is going to be Monday through Wednesday, July 17th through 19th. Uh, so join us for a rain forest adventure. Details about all those things are in your bulletin, so please check it out. And now as God's beloved community, let us stand and greet one another this morning. As you find your way back to your seats, let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship as we pause for the ringing of the bell and then to listen to a prelude by Nathan.
would you please stand as you are able for the call to worship. Here, God speaks to us. 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 Our opening hymn is number 560, For the Beauty of the Earth. Let us praise God for creation. You may be seated. We do not always act as Christ's disciples. We do not always live out our faith. This is the truth. Let us confess that truth to God, who is slow to anger and quick to forgive. Would you please join me in the unison prayer of confession? God, whose giving knows no ending, all that is in heaven and earth is yours. We confess that we often forget that all things come from you, believing we have earned or created what we have, and that we never have enough. 
We confess that we often give grudgingly rather than freely. We give the time and money and energy we have left after we have satisfied ourselves, even as you call us to imitate your self-giving love. We limit your generosity so we feel okay about limiting our own. Forgive us, God. Open our ears to hear you speaking and our hearts to embrace your purpose. Give us generous hearts. Amen. Friends, our salvation is not something that can be purchased with money or enough good deeds. Our salvation is a gift, freely and generously given by God. So know this, your sins are forgiven. At this time, I'll invite the children to join me up front for the children's time as we welcome them by singing Where Children Belong. I have a couple pictures I'm going to show you today up on the screen. All right, so here's picture number one. And I'm wondering, what do you think it would be like if you went over to their house for dinner? It feels a little bit creepy. You feel a little scared. Boring. Yeah, what else? It might be uncomfortable. They look pretty serious. Do you think there's a lot of fun going on at their house? It doesn't really look like that, huh? All right, let's look at picture number two. What about if you went over to their house and had pizza dinner with them? What do you think that would be like? Fun. Exciting. Exciting. Happy. Awesome. You would be bored with the pizza-eating friends who are laughing? Oh, my. So I think this one looks like more fun. It's pizza. I think pizza is something that almost everyone likes. I don't know what that other boring couple was serving. Maybe meatloaf. Maybe, I don't know, maybe liver and onions. Maybe bugs. Oh, my. But this one looks more fun. So there is a verse in the Bible story we're going to read today that says, God loves a cheerful giver, someone who is happy to share with others and to give to others. And if we look at this picture, look at they ordered two pizzas, and they're all sharing them, and they're all having a good time, and they're all getting some, and they're laughing, and it's a lot of fun. But if we look back at the first picture, I don't know that they really look like they're cheerful givers. They look like they're pretty serious, boring people. Yeah, but God calls us to be cheerful givers. So that means inviting other people in and greeting them with a smile and being happy to share your pizza or to be happy to open up a package of cookies and share them with them, or to make, if you were to make cookies for your neighbor and bring them over, to give them to them with a smile, instead of being like, that wouldn't be very fun, huh? To give them to them with a smile or make them a cheery card. God says, I love a cheerful giver, someone who delights in sharing with other people. So you think we can do that, share with others and be happy about it, that we can all have a good time together? All right, let's say a prayer together. Dear God, God, help us us to be cheerful givers, givers, including including others, and being happy they're there. Amen. All right, you guys can go back to your seats. You can grab a clipboard if you haven't grabbed one yet.
Let us pray. God of wisdom, you delight in deep truth. Let these words of scripture teach our hearts that we may hear of the joy and gladness you desire for our lives. Amen. Our first scripture reading this morning comes from the second letter to the Corinthians, chapter 9, verses 6 through 15. Listen now for the word of the Lord. The point is this. The one who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And the one who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each of you must give as you have made up your mind, not regretfully or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to provide you with every blessing in abundance so that by always having enough of everything, you may share abundantly in every good work. As it is written, he scatters abroad. He gives to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way for your great generosity, which will produce thanksgiving to God through us for the rendering of this ministry that not only supplies the needs of the saints, but also overflows with many thanksgivings to God. Through the testing of this ministry, you glorify God by your obedience to the confession of the gospel of Christ and by the generosity of your partnership with them and with all others, while they long for you and pray for you because of the surpassing grace of God that he has given you. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. Our second scripture reading this morning comes from the book of James, chapter 1, verse 17. Listen again for the word of the Lord. Every generous act of giving, with every perfect gift, is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. This is the word of God for the people of God. God. Stories are powerful. We explore the story of God here each week, and we consider what our story is and what our story will be as we live into God's story, both as individuals and as a church together. This summer, we're adding some more stories to the mix. Each Sunday for the next five weeks, we're also going to watch a Disney or Pixar short and place that story into the dialogue as well. It's going to be a little light summer fun. And so today, we're going to watch the 2017 Pixar short, Lou, in two parts. So let's get started with part one here. So recess. The best part of the school day. At the end of recess time, we see that inevitably, footballs, lunchboxes, and frisbees get left out. At this particular playground, Lou comes along after the children have gone back inside and takes all those items back to the lost and found box. And when the children come back outside for recess again, they eagerly take their items back and get to playing until their play is ruined by the schoolyard bully who steals the toys from the other children and puts them into his own backpack. Rather than understand the joy of giving and sharing, this schoolyard bully seems to delight in taking and hoarding and keeping it to himself. But let's see what happens. 
the bully seems to live for the joy of taking until something is taken from him. Lou tries to take the backpack full of the other kid's stuff, and while Lou is ultimately successful at getting the other kid's stuff, the bully retains his backpack. But then he discovers that it is completely empty. It's not just the other kid's stuff that was put back in the lost and found box, but his teddy bear as well. And Lou forces the bully to give the kids their stuff back, which the bully does very begrudgingly. Here's your football back. But then one little girl gets her pink stuffy back and gives him a hug. And something changes in the bully, inside the bully. And the bully discovers the joy of giving. God longs for us to discover the joy of giving as well. God gave first. God set the example. God created and gave us this whole earth, created the land and the sky, the plants and the sun and moon and stars, the birds of the air and the fish of the sea, and every animal that roams the earth. God created it all and gave it to us, entrusted it to us. And then many years later, God gave us Jesus, the ultimate gift. God in human flesh, so we might truly understand God and God's love and grace. Every generous act of giving sense stems from these generous acts of God. That includes the generous act of giving happening in Fortin de la Flores. Fortin de la Flores is a small Mexican town of around 20,000 people. It's located at the foot of the mountains in the state of Veracruz. It is also along the route the train takes between other major cities in Central America. Because of this, hundreds of migrants pass through the town. Most of the people in Fortin are not wealthy or even middle class, not even by the standards of Mexico City. But though their resources are limited, the people of Fortin welcome the strangers who pass through on the trains and joyfully share whatever they can. You see, when the trains stop, the residents often go down to the tracks and chat while handing up fruit and sandwiches or water to the migrants. An American reporter asks the people about their generosity. One woman replies, right now we're eating. When we are finished, there will be a little left over. That we can pass along, she says with a smile. The reporter comments that people in Fortin do not talk about giving food away, but about passing it along, as if the food did not belong to them alone in the first place. Another man replies, the migrants come through every day. Every day they ask for food. Every day. He wants to make sure the reporter understands that feeding migrants is not an extraordinary event or even something to be noticed or a story told about. It is just a part of their everyday life. Giving is a part of their everyday life. Feeding the stranger is as basic as feeding one's own family. A third woman explains the generosity of the people. It's a good thing to do, she says. It's how we are taught. We like to do it. There is joy in doing it. And there's this one part of the Bible that says to feed and clothe people. Where might we find joy in giving? To the offering which supports the church's mission and ministry? To the food pantry? 
to VBS. We'll need snack and craft donations here soon. Or to the neighbor having a rough week. Or the friend who could really use a smile. How can we imitate God's generous acts of giving in some small way and be a joyful giver? May our eyes be open to opportunities this week. Amen. Our hymn of response is number 455, Come All Christians Be Committed. Let us stand and join our voices together in song. You may be seated, and I'll invite the elders who are helping to serve communion to please come forward at this time. One of Christ's generous acts was to set the table and then make sure we knew that all are welcome that there is enough for everyone at this table. So come, you who have been here often, and you who have not been in a long time, you who already love God with your whole heart, and you who want to love God more, you who are following faithfully, 
and you who are worried that you have failed. Come, this is Christ's table, and all are welcome here. Let us pray. Praise to you, God, for all your generous and creative works. You created the world and called it good. You made us in your image to live together in love. You made a covenant with us, and even when we turned from you, you remained ever faithful to us. Thank you, God, for sending us your son. He lived among us and told your story. He healed the sick and welcomed sinners. He ate with outcasts and made sure all were fed. He shared our pain and died our death, then rose to new life that we might live. Remembering your boundless, generous love revealed to us in Jesus Christ, we break bread and share the cup. And so, gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these your gifts of bread and juice, that they may be for us the body and blood of Christ, and that we then may be Christ's body for the world. We ask all these things in the name of Christ, who taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The Lord Jesus, on the night of his arrest, took bread. And after giving thanks to God for it, he broke it and said, Take and eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup. And he said, This cup is a new covenant. It's sealed in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Every time you drink of it, do so in remembrance of me. And so every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we remember Jesus Christ until he comes again. This morning we are serving communion by modified intinction. So that means in a minute you'll come forward uh, up the center aisle. A piece of bread will be handed to you, which you can eat immediately. And then you'll proceed down to uh, the juice station. You'll take a cup of juice and drink it, and then go back to your seat and put it in a little juice holder in the pews. Uh, we do have gluten-free crackers for those who need it here on the communion table. The elders will get ready, and then we'll invite you forward.
Let us pray. God, you have joyfully and generously provided for us, and you have fed us this morning. Having experienced the joy of receiving, let us go out committed to give and share joyfully as well. Amen. When we baptize a child, the congregation makes promises, specifically to support and nurture those being baptized and to teach them and encourage them in their faith. So this morning we give thanks for all who have taught, those who have nurtured the children of the congregation through Sunday school and junior church. We also give thanks for those who have worked with our youth and led, encouraged, questioned, and grown with our middle school and high school youth groups. So as I call your name, would you please stand and remain standing until all names have been called. So we are so grateful for our Sunday school teachers. Sarah Tobolesky, who taught music. Pat Carl. We'll clap at the end for everyone. <laughs> we have a lot of people to thank today. Steph Borland, Tom Fetterman, Paula Payton, Jen Lewis, Janine Sanner, and Penny Qualls. We're going to keep them standing and also thank our junior church teachers, Teresa Weber, Carol Lull, Linda Tobolesky, and Jenna Copeland. And finally, our youth group leaders, Jake Tobolesky, Jess Quiggle, Shannon Sanders, and Kevin Lewis. So now let us clap for all these faithful teachers. Thank you for all of your hard work this past year, loving and teaching our children. We so appreciate each one of you. This year, we especially want to recognize and thank our youth director, Jake Tobolesky, as he steps back from that job after nine years. So at this time, I'm going to invite Jake forward. I did get you cardboard. <laughs> be, be recycling that, okay? We're caring for God's earth. <laughs> Jake, over the last nine years, you have transformed our youth program from one where kids came and had some lessons and had some fun uh, into a youth ministry where you questioned with the kids and learned and grew with them where we listened to where they were at and met them right where they were in their faith journey. We're so grateful for all that you have done for the youth of the church and the community over the past nine years. We wanted to fill the pews with some of the former youth, but here's the thing. There are four of us getting in touch with as many former youth as we could, and they are off doing amazing things. <laughs> including one who is preaching this morning at another congregation. And we know that that's part of your doing because of the way you have inspired her faith. So we are so grateful for the past nine years. As a token of our appreciation, we got you cardboard. So this is a map of the United States, and it is a photo board. So as the Tobolesky family visit each state, they can take a picture of themselves and fill each state with their photos. We know. <laughs> we know both how much photography and time with your family means to you. So thank you so much, Jake. You know, 
it, it's been a privilege to serve in this role, um, but it wasn't just me. Um, you know, uh, Jess and Shannon and Elizabeth, who moved uh, to Pittsburgh, you know, we, we become very close. They're the people I trust the most. All we ever wanted to do, the whole goal was just to give kids a place to develop and grow and be safe. And uh, so hopefully we did that along the way. And uh, um, it's not like I'm going anywhere. This just means that, you know, there's more opportunities for John Payton to ask me to get up in the attic of the church now. <laughs> so thank you very, very much. I appreciate it. Our collaborative, creative God has called us to join him in God's work of love in the world. May we be generous of hand, heart, and mind. May we give joyfully to the mission and ministry of the church. Yesterday, we joyfully gave away a ton of food at the food pantry. So much food. We sorted over 1,600 pounds of food from the letter carrier's food drive on Wednesday night. We unpacked over 3,800 pounds of food that was ordered from Second Harvest on Friday. We received over 1,000 pounds of food from Wegmans on Saturday morning through their food recovery program. And then St. Stephen's Episcopal Church dropped off 81 dozen eggs. We cheerfully gave families tons of food, including lots of fresh produce for the month ahead. Love grows here and is shared with our community. Thank you for the ways that you contribute to make that possible.
Let us pray. Generous God, you have chosen to reveal yourself to us in ways this world considers foolish, and you call us to join you. As we learn generosity in the midst of a world that teaches self-sufficiency, bless our gifts that they may be a blessing to others. As we learn trust in the midst of a world that teaches individualism, bless our gifts that they may lead us into community. As we learn sacrifice in the midst of a world that teaches greed, bless our gifts that they may remind us of all that you have given to us. We dedicate these gifts to you, God. Amen. Our closing hymn is both on an insert and on the screen. God, whose giving knows no ending. Let us join our voices together in song. May God indeed open our hands wide in sharing as we seek to be joyful givers. And now may the God who loves you take delight in your living. May the God who seeks you find you when you fall. And may the God who sends you send you now with great joy. For the very one who created you and redeemed you goes with you still. Amen.
Thank you for joining us in worship today.